Perhaps you can relate to this journal entry I'm about to read, or maybe you know someone else who could relate to this journal entry. Three o'clock Friday afternoon, what a week. I mean, talk about stress. Both here at work and on the home front, home front, nothing went right. Everybody makes me crazy. The only thing that's getting me through today is knowing that tonight I've got the house all to myself. I can be alone at last. I can do anything I want, and I'm going to. After all, I deserve a little secret indulgence now and then. No one has to know it's not hurting anybody. I think everybody does it. They just don't want to admit it. They're too ashamed. Actually, I don't really want to admit it either. It's just a secret that I have. I know I'm not addicted, even though once I start, oh, it's so hard to stop. And then I feel really sick, wishing I could throw it all up and out, but I can't. If I could change anything about my indulgence, it would be that I could stop sooner than I do and not do it as often as I do. Then again, it's not really hurting anybody. Even if I do isolate myself from my family and my friends on an evening like tonight. How many of you can relate to that or know someone who could relate to that? Show of hands, you know someone? Well, I have a little confession to make. That's really my journal entry. Let me just show you what I struggle with. This <laughs> is what I was talking about. It's true. It's a little embarrassing. It's hard to stop it, too. Now the whole sleeve is gone. Easily. And that feel, it makes me really vulnerable to admit that to you. But it's my truth. I hope it doesn't make me unlovable. But isn't that the feeling that we have, is that somehow, if you know me too well, if I share my secrets and my weaknesses and my thoughts, you may find me unlovable, undeserving, broken. You may stay away from me. As a, as a marriage therapist over these 20 years, I'm convinced, and I'm not an expert in pornography addiction. I don't know if we call it addiction or if we call it obsession, if it's hypersexuality. I don't know if it changes the brain, if it doesn't change the brain. Good people disagree. What I care about is that pornography addiction, any of my compulsions, any of the things that I hold secret and sacred, prevent me from being close to you, to someone else. Let me show you what I often write. I'll just bring out a new marker, because you're worth it. Nice big black one. I think intimacy, you knowing me, is probably the scariest thing that there is. When two people know each other, they take the risk of getting to know each other just two X's. So sorry, this is really not brilliant for this kind of size room. But I love it. It works for my simple brain. So there's tension between these two people because, holy smokes, if you really knew me, you may not love me. So what we do instead, in my experience anyway, is that we alleviate some of that tension by focusing and triangling it a third thing. So maybe we have children right away. Maybe that'll make us feel closer. Maybe we'll just do more church service. Or maybe one of us will have an affair. Or maybe we'll focus on the remodel. Or we'll focus on the Oreos. Or we'll focus on the pornography. Or we'll focus on money. In-laws. Anything else you think about that could be a wedge between two people? All protects us from getting too close. From feeling too vulnerable. Too ashamed. When we can keep, and Rory Reed gave you a great name, when we can keep that self-compassion because I overindulge in those Oreos and I can't wear my black skirt today because it's too tight so I had to wear a dress. It just is what it is. <clears throat> Hopefully the Orioles don't define me, or the pornography doesn't define us, or our loved ones, or the people we help. We've already been bought with a price. Those who are Christian, we've already been bought with a price. So our worth doesn't really go up and down. It stays the same. But what we do face are the consequences when I overindulge in Oreos. Intimacy, the scariest thing that we do. But the best thing that we do 
How many of you have ever seen the movie Lars and the Real Girl? Love that movie. Do you mind seeing a few clips from that movie? Lars, what a doll. He's this young man. He lives in the garage while his brother and sister-in-law live in the family house. Parents are both deceased. Lars wants to be in the garage. That's where he's comfortable. Intimacy, relationships scare him to death. And there's a good example of it with Lars and the real girl. So again, the main character is Lars, scared to death of relationships. And then Karen and Gus are the brother and sister-in-law that live in the garage. There's somebody at work that loves Lars. We'd really like to get to know him. Her name is Margo. So I think that's probably enough to set up this clip for you. The fear of intimacy. Think about your own self. What prevents you from being closer to the people you love? Karen, 
I mean, come here, it's Lars. Really? Yeah. <laughs> She's shocked, really? She's just doing uh, some kind of, uh, it's pretty good women's yoga. <laughs> Good, good, good stuff. Go ahead. What's up? I have a visitor. Do you have a... Visitor? Yeah. It's great. Yeah. 